part of the group that brought the steel back from the World Trade Center? Well, we met in New York with, with a bunch of New York firemen that actually loaded it on our truck, and it meant a lot to them that we were taking that steel back. Uh, they were pretty emotional about it. Being that we're firefighters and they're firefighters, it's a brotherhood. And when we were in New York, we went to put the I-beam on the trailer, and uh, it was a 24-foot long piece, and we knew that going in, but we put it on the trailer and made it, it was too long, and it was too top heavy. So we actually uh, measured to the 12 foot mark, cut it exactly in half. Uh, they had a welder there who was also the, the crane operator and he broke out a torch and physically cut the, the beam in half because we were bringing back, we were gonna cut it in Cincinnati and give half to Cincinnati for the fire museum and we were gonna keep half. So we just figured we'd just cut it in half there and that enabled us to get it on the trailer and balance it out the load and it, it made it a lot better for our trip back. We were driving back through, uh, just crossed into Ohio and we blew a tire. We had to pull off the side of the road and then uh, we were in the middle of nowhere. I had to change a tire and found out that the uh, rim that we had for a spare didn't match so we ended up having to go into the country to find a gas station that could change our tire. Uh, we have no idea what caused the flat tire. Um, we're not sure if it was old tires, if it was weight on the truck, the, the beams weighed too much. No one ever actually knew exactly how much the beams weighed. Uh, we were guessing around eight, 9,000 pounds. Uh, we, when we blew the third tire, we were uh, five miles from the Jeffersonville exit, and that's where we were gonna meet the Patriot Guard that was gonna escort us back into our headquarters station. But we called ahead on the radio and told them we had a third flat tire, and the, uh, the Patriot Guard was gonna, they were going to go look for a, a tire store at that exit and there happened to be getting gas in a gas station where they were waiting for us. Uh, a mobile truck tire repair service, they were fueling up their truck at that gas station. So they asked them if they could help us and they said sure, they came out. Uh, the Patriot Guard actually escorted them out with their motorcycles. They changed our third flat tire for us. Uh, actually they didn't charge us a thing and uh, that got us the rest of the way home after the third flat. Along the way, we had a banner that was tied to the side of the steel, and uh, we had caught numerous cars they would pull up. We actually started to create a traffic jam at some times on the expressway. People were rolling their windows down and had cell phones out and cameras taking pictures of it. Every tractor trailer that went by would blow their horns at it. It was almost like escorting a rock star around. We pulled into a gas station in Pennsylvania, which happened to be kind of close to Shanksville where the other plane went down and, and people just started parking their cars and coming up to the truck in the gas station and uh, we had a, a sharpie marker that we would we gave to them and a lady signed her name to it and pretty soon we had a line of people but it actually delayed us coming back probably almost 20 minutes to a half an hour because we had so many people that wanted to sign the banner. The, the neatest part of the ride I guess back from Jeffersonville was the Patriot Guard that escorted us the, the motorcycles. We were never really quite sure how many motorcycles there were in the group, but uh, they all had big American flags flying off the back of their bikes, and they pretty much uh, every exit we came to, they blocked the entrance ramps on the expressway so no cars could get on, and we had a nonstop trip all the way back from Jeffersonville because of the, the Patriot Guards that, uh, that drove us back home. But it was neat to see all the American flags flying, and. That's really when we had a, a caravan of people next to us with their cars because they kind of got wind of what was going on and that's where pretty much all the trouble started, not trouble, but that's where we started getting a lot of traffic off to our side with people taking pictures and with their cell phones and stuff. Yeah, thanks. Boy, it looks neat, doesn't it? Look at this. Oh, man, there it is. My name is Scott Sauters. I'm the Assistant Chief with Green Township Fire and EMS. And before we start, I just want to acknowledge Chief Douglas Witzkin, 
who uh, was a very instrumental part of this whole program, was uh, he had an out-of-town commitment predetermined and uh, unfortunately was unable to be here tonight. So just wanted to make sure we, uh, we acknowledge that. To start this ceremony, I just want to say it's intended to remember those who have died on September 1st, 2001. Not only in New York City, but also in Pennsylvania, in the Pentagon. And we're here tonight to support that thought and that effort and that honor. Okay, I would like to bring up Trustee Tony Upton to start the ceremony. Um, I just want to say hello to a couple of people uh, for coming out and then mention some of the folks who made this possible. Uh, I want to say on behalf of Dave Lennonberg and Tracy Winkler, our two uh, trustees, and, and Tom Strauss is our fiscal officer. Tom is here. And we uh, appreciate very much seeing you folks. Steve Schenkel is a member of the Oak Hill School Board. He's here with us. Tony Roziola has been on many, 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 many uh, committees for us in the township. He's here. And uh, Bill Miles presently is on the Cincinnati Metropolitan Housing Board. So we really appreciate seeing those people. Now, I want to recognize those folks who uh, have made this possible. The Port Authority of New York and New Jersey for releasing the steel artifact to our community for use in a memorial. Linda Tenenfeld for her tireless efforts and persistence in making all the necessary arrangements to get the steel artifact donated to Green Township and her efforts for making the pickup from New York City. Thank you, Linda. New York City Fire Riders for their logistical assistance in picking up the steel artifact. Are they here? Oh, that's a shame. We would have taken them to Skyline. Rusty Wayne, uh, Rusty Wayne from Wayne Pole Buildings for his donation of the truck and trailer used to pick up the steel artifact from, for the following of the employees to make the trip, allowing one of his folks to go up there with him. Ryan Keller from Wayne Pole Buildings for volunteer to drive the truck during the New, New York trip. Thank you, Ryan. District Chief Ed Thomas, Lieutenant Russ Ruberg, and Fire Fire Paramedic Dan Gallagher from Green Township Fire and EMS for volunteering to make the trip to New York City and assist the pickup of the steel. The Patriot Guard Motorcycles for volunteer the escort for Memorial Steel from Columbus to Green Township. Now, some of you young people will remember Mac Fire Incorporated, Green Township Professional Firefighters Local 2927, Green Township Firefighters Association, the SSG Hawkins Fund for donating money to pay for the diesel fuel for the truck during the New York trip. Give them a hand. <laughs> State Representative Bill Seitz, Dave McCandless from Congressional Steve Chabot's office, Father John Quigley and Vicki Monahan for their participation in, in the welcoming ceremony, and Woolen Weber Motors for the use of the parking lot next door. <laughs> now, I'm supposed to make some remarks, but I'm not going to do that because it's getting late. I think when you stand and take your pictures a little later on and you look at this, I think that's enough remarks. Thank you. Okay, I did, uh, I did want to recognize the, uh, the gentlemen that are all standing behind me here on the podium. This is a combination of uh, two members of a Green Township MAC Honor Guard, along with VFW Post 10380 Honor Guard. Now I'd like to bring up the State Senator from Ohio Senate District 8, Senator Bill Seitz. Thank you very much, Chief. Folks, we are only a few weeks away, a couple weeks away, from the greatest tragedy I ever witnessed in my life. And we're here to remember that tragedy. But we're also here to remember the heroism and the lessons that we learned from that tragedy. I had a Japanese client in my law firm that gave me this nice little book called World Trade Center that came out right after the tragedy of 9-11. And folks, I, I know in the dimming light you might not be able to see it, but we went from 
these gorgeous buildings, which which I hope you're, if you want to see them afterwards, I'll let you show, I'll let you see it. These two gorgeous buildings, the epicenter of world trade, part of the heart of the United States, glimmering on the Hudson River. And in one short day, we went from that to this. It was reduced to the twisted, torn hunks of steel that we have brought here from New York City tonight, thanks to our motorcycle escort and our drivers that made it here eventually. And, and, and I'm telling you what, that was a tragedy. That day I'll never forget, and I'm sure you, knew, well, you will never forget it either. Our nation is under attack. Well, we all know the aftermath of that tragedy. We all remained glued to the television for days thereafter. We all remained acutely aware of the sacrifices that were made to try to rescue people and of the tremendous sacrifice made by our first responders who walked up those steps never knowing, never knowing whether the building was going to fall on them before they could come down, never knowing whether they could get back down before they had rescued that last person. It was an act of heroism that has never been duplicated in my lifetime, and I was born in 1954. But what did we learn from that tragedy? I think we learned a lot of things. And the question is, are we going to forget those lessons? We learned that there are limits to building strength, and we learned something about building stronger buildings. We learned that the rest of the world is not necessarily our friend, and there are people with whom you cannot have a civilized discussion. You must only eradicate them. We learned that our police and first responders are at the very front line of our communities keeping us safe, and they must always and everywhere be defended. We learned that there is a way to make the world safer and freer, and in the ensuing 10 years, we have liberated tens of millions of people in Iraq and Afghanistan from oppressive governments. There were many, many good lessons that were learned, including how to keep our country safer. And I wonder tonight whether we are going to forget those lessons, because I don't think the people in this crowd are ever going to forget those lessons. There are those that now believe we can get along with everybody in the world and that everybody is our friend. I think those people have forgotten the lessons of 9-11. And there are those in our state who believe that it is appropriate to disrespect and devalue our policemen and our firemen and try to take away their rights to fair wages and compensation. And I fear those people have also lost their way. We learned a lot about community on 9-11, and I hope we haven't forgotten it. So folks, this memorial will be a lasting tribute to the sacrifice of those who died on 9-11. But more importantly, I hope it will be a permanent memory of the lessons we should have learned, we did learn, and we dare not forget as we go forward. God bless you all. Thank you for the escort. Thank you for bringing this memorable piece to my township. I respect you all, and God bless the United States. Thank you.